pause whenever you feel you're not able to understand pause it re rewind go through the topic and try to ensure that you have understood this concept very very properly because yes it does take time to understand hello friends so now we'll come to a very very uh, interesting topic and it's a topic where many of you fumble also uh, so it requires a bit of understanding okay and if you understand the concept it becomes very clear so the topic is rh negative pregnancy and let's deal with this in three parts and the first part which is also the most important part is understanding the basics okay so let's start with the case scenario a 23 year old gravida 2 presents to the antenatal opd for a routine checkup she is 12 weeks pregnant investigations reveal her blood group is b negative her husband is a positive her first delivery was a home delivery and she is unaware of her first child's blood group how will you proceed further so here we have a scenario we have an rh negative mother pregnant woman with an rh positive partner okay and we need to know how to proceed further so let's see what all needs to be done how should we approach this topic uh, remember any individual who lacks a red cell antigen that means lacks the d antigen may produce an antibody when exposed to that antigen and red cell aluminization that means d antibodies against the et antigen the prevalence of this is around 1% in pregnancy now this is exactly what happens so look carefully at this diagram okay you can see this is her first pregnancy the mother is rh negative okay she lacks d antigen also she's never been exposed to the d antigen so she lacks antibodies against the d antigen and see she's carrying an rh positive baby you know what happens is during delivery this rh positive baby most commonly during delivery what happens some mixing of fetal blood happens in the maternal circulation and this is called as feto maternal hemorrhage okay it may be very slight it may even be just 1 ml but that small amount of blood during an inciting event and the most common inciting event is delivery what will what will happen when fetal cells enter the maternal circulation because she is rh negative this is a different uh, antigen entering her body the body will respond by producing antibodies to this antigen so you see these these are antibodies which have been produced now in between her two deliveries okay so these antibodies have now been produced against the d antigen so what happens when she's pregnant again and this time she's carrying again an rh positive fetus so these antibodies will go and start attacking these d antigen positive uh, uh, red cells in the blood okay so what will happen is these antibodies will attack the fetal rbcs and this will lead to fetal anemia okay it will it, if it is if the antibodies amount of antibodies are significant it will lead to significant fetal anemia this will lead to circulation uh, overload and lead to high drops fetalis and it eventually fetal death okay so this is what happens because of rh iso immunization a small inciting event will cause fetal maternal hemorrhage that fetal maternal hemorrhage will incite the production of antibodies in the mother against the d antigen the next time the mother is exposed to the d antigen that means she's carrying another rh positive fetus that baby is at threat of getting the red cells destroyed and developing fetal anemia okay so let's understand this again there is fetal hemolysis because of the attack of the d antibodies on the d antigen leading to fetal anemia leading to changes in fetal fetal circulation leading to increased blood flow to the brain so basically when a patient comes to us and you find yes that this patient is rh isoimmunized and yes she has antibodies against the uh, d antigen how do we now know that this fetus is anemic by observing changes in the fetal circulation if the fetus is anemic more blood flow will go to the essential organs in the fetus and that is the brain so these changes in fetal circulation because of anemia lead to increased blood flow to the brain which we can pick up when we do an ultrasound so what do we see on an ultrasound we see an increased peak systolic velocity in the middle cerebral artery and eventually what happens is hydrops fetalis and fetal death 
but this is the sequence of events that happens and where can we pick up the problem we can pick up the problem here and try to correct it here before further damage happens okay we correct it here and we prevent further damage from happening okay so what happens with progressive pregnancies worsening hemolysis hemolysis starts occurring earlier and earlier because antibodies the amount of antibodies in the maternal blood keep increasing and progressive worse pregnancies the prognosis becomes poorer and poorer so that's very characteristic of rh isoimmunization now let's understand a bit more about fetal maternal hemorrhage that is the inciting event okay so the d antigen has to enter the maternal circulation for her body to produce antibodies and most common inciting event is delivery okay even 0.1 ml of blood can incite an antibody response so it doesn't have to be a lot of mixing of blood even 0.1 ml can incite an antibody response 16 percent likelihood to develop there is a 16 percent chance that if we do not give prophylaxis so what is this prophylaxis we'll talk about to prevent this sensitization from happening we can give anti d to the mother okay but if you don't give anti d there is a 16 percent chance that alloimmunization will happen that means antibodies will form against the d antigen and 90 percent of this response happens during delivery 10 percent occurs because of other inciting events what are the other inciting events the other inciting events could be pregnancy loss this could be a spontaneous abortion or an induced abortion it could be a molar pregnancy it could be an ectopic pregnancy it could be suction evacuation of products of conception it could be because of procedures like chorionic filler sampling amniocentesis chordocentesis external cephalic version and could be because of others like delivery trauma antipartum hemorrhage and delivery you already know it's 90 percent of the reason why uh, the antibody response is initiated unexplained vaginal bleeding in pregnancy and manual removal of placenta so any of these inciting events if they occur okay that means the antibody mother has produced antibody and we have to stop this production or negate these number of antibodies formed so for doing that we give anti d so let's understand a bit more okay so we have two scenarios now when a patient comes who is rh negative she is either unimmunized that means she has not been exposed to d antigen or she is rh isoimmunized in both the management is different in a woman who is not isoimmunized we have to give her prophylaxis at delivery or at the time of other inciting events so that she doesn't develop antibodies or if she does develop antibodies they get neutralized and the other scenario is she comes to us she's already isoimmunized and how do we know that we know that because she is her indirect Coombs test is positive that means she already has d antibodies against the d antigen and now we need to basically look out for fetal anemia and how do we do that by doing a mca of the uh, a doppler of the middle cerebral artery and seeing if there is more blood being supplied to the brain indirectly that tells us yes there is fetal anemia okay so this is what we have to understand how to manage both these scenarios separately okay so what do we do well the first thing is when a woman comes to us we determine the blood group and rh type of a woman at the first prenatal visit that's why it's very essential to do blood group and blood group and rh typing the first time she visits you okay what are the possibilities we will talk about if she's rh negative so if she's rh negative that's what we're worried about determine the rh status of her partner or her husband okay determine her the rh status of the husband if he is also rh negative then of course nothing to worry so if mother is rh negative her husband is rh negative there is no need to worry at all because there is no risk of iso of immunization and provide routine antenatal care the problem comes if the husband is rh positive now if the <clears throat> husband is rh positive there is a 50 to 100 percent chance that the fetus she's carrying is rh positive okay depending on whether the partner is heterozygous or homozygous 
for the d antigen all right so we'll discuss this a bit further so what happens is if the mother is rh negative that means she is not carrying the d antigen and this is how we will depict it if the father is homozygous that means he will be like this then in such a case all the fetuses will be rh positive right all the fetuses is a hundred percent probability that then all the fetus that the fetus is rh positive right but if the mother is rh negative and the father is heterozygous for the d antigen then there is a 50 percent chance that the baby is rh negative and a 50 percent chance that the baby is rh positive all right so if the father is homozygous there, the baby is definitely Rh positive, but if the father is heterozygous, there is a 50% chance that the baby is actually Rh negative. So what can be done in such a scenario? Ideally, what we can be done, but this is not recommended, but yes, if uh, it can be offered to the patient, if the patient wishes to get it done, it can be done. So you can offer cell-free DNA to determine the Rh status of the fetus. So especially if the husband is heterozygous okay if the husband is homozygous 100 percent sure the baby is rh positive but in the event husband is heterozygous there's a 50 percent chance this baby is rh negative and of course then nothing further needs to be done so we can offer cell-free dna that means take a sample of maternal blood in that find cell-free dna of the fetus and determine the rh status of the fetus okay so what happens in allo immunized women Testing can identify fetuses that are D-negative and do not require further surveillance. In non-immunized women, antenatal anti-D can be withheld if the fetus is D-negative. So if we are identifying an Rh-negative fetus, we don't need to give her further prophylaxis antenatally. And also, if she's isoimmunized, we don't have to monitor that fetus further because that fetus is not at risk of developing fetal anemia. So that's the biggest advantage of offering cell-free DNA in a woman whose partner is heterozygous for the D antigen. So I hope this is clear. If you've not understood, go back and listen to this again because it's a very important concept. I will repeat, if the father is homozygous for the D antigen, 100% that fetus is also D positive. That means RH positive. But if the father is heterozygous for the D antigen, there is a 50% chance that baby is RH negative. And then no further workup needs to be done in that patient. But as I said, this is not routinely recommended because of the cost involved. Okay, so now we have a patient who is RH negative. Okay, partner is RH positive. You may or may not choose to do this part of the investigation. Okay, but either way, if the patient is uh, RH negative and her husband is RH positive, we always do an indirect Coombs test. This will help us tell whether the uh, mother is isoimmunized. That means she has antibodies against the D antigen or is non-ISO immunized. So if it is negative, that means she is not sensitized and she needs prophylaxis during delivery and also we give antipartum prophylaxis during the antipartum period or following an inciting event. But if she is positive, that means she is sensitized. That means she already has antibodies against the D antigen and this baby is at risk of developing fetal anemia okay so let's this is just the basics now further on we will go and discuss the two different scenarios in more detail so let's do some mcqs on this an rh negative primary visits the antenatal opd her husband is rh positive she's worried about the risk of iso immunization and asks about the risk of her baby being rh positive what is the correct statement? There is a 100% chance the fetus is Rh positive. There is a 75% chance the fetus is Rh positive, depending on if the husband is heterozygous or homozygous for the D antigen. There is a 50% chance the fetus is Rh positive, depending on if the husband is heterozygous or homozygous, or there is a 25% chance. What is the answer? The answer is there is a 50% chance that this fetus is Rh positive depending on if the husband is heterozygous. If it's heterozygous, it's 50%. If it's homozygous, the fetus will be 100% Rh positive, which is not an inciting event in pregnancy. 
that can lead to fetal maternal hemorrhage okay so cesarean section is definitely an inciting event evacuation of molar pregnancy is ECV or is also but obstetric Doppler is not a Doppler is just done through the ultrasound and this is not an inciting event for fetal maternal hemorrhage. Dokumenting.